I've picked a couple of less well-known football players to do my first two film studies of the week after the Ravens' 27-24 win over the Bengals. Look, Geno Stone made one of the decisive plays, and he was surging on the Bengals' fourth possession there, their, their first possession of the third quarter, I should say. Uh, it happened on the opening drive. Ravens are up 13-10. What did it do? It allowed the Ravens to get ahead by, by two scores. I personally think we missed an opportunity to get ahead by two scores on our second possession by a poor third and long, long play call, uh, but that's an issue for another video. Four plays after Stone's interception of Joe Burrow, where he ran out of bounds to some of our surprise. Uh, Lamar Jackson hits Mark Andrews, I think on a third down touchdown pass, three yarder. It was a critical play that Stone made. For the Ravens to get ahead twice, the Bengals got within three points thereafter, 20-17 to 17 and then 27-24. But on both occasions, the Ravens' offense was able to answer. That's complimentary football, if you ask me. Uh, the Ravens were able to score after the Bengals cut it to 20-17, to 17, and then we were able to run out the last three minutes and 28 seconds after the Bengals closed to 27-24. I'm going to show some film of Geno Stone before this year. When he's been given opportunities, he's made plays at times. He hasn't made as many plays as Marcus Williams, and he's not as good against the pass. The title of the video, Ball Hawk Eye, I mean, come on. Like, he's not he's not a ball hawk so far in his NFL career, but he's an Iowa Hawkeye, so, you know, give me some leeway there. This is his interception against uh, Ben Roethlisberger, I think, in 2021. I believe, and I'll show you a little bit of film of him 2022 against the Browns. He comes downhill. He's aggressive. He's a physical guy for a safety, if you ask me. He's willing to come downhill and hit people throughout his career, if you ask me. I love the way he plays. This is a tackle on Nick Chubb um, near the goal line. Other guys are helping out for sure. Stone shows an ability to do this, and we'll get to his play against the Bengals here in a moment. Shows an ability to stay inside and then get back to the outside. Chubb is a guy who does this very well. The, the Browns often pull the guard and wrap him all the way around, kind of like getting DBs to get sucked up inside. Look at the angle Chubb takes. Stone tempos this. He's going to do it again on another play that I show you. Basically forces Chubb to run out of space. We're talking about a guy who doesn't start for us, who has and can tackle Nick Chubb, you know, near the sideline. It's not always physical tackles, but that one's pretty damn physical. And he just intercepted Joe Burrow. We are extremely blessed to have this guy to be able to bring in when someone like Marcus Williams gets hurt. <clears throat> Last one from film prior to Sunday. Geno Stone's off the left side. He's going to be involved in a tackle again. This was an amazing win, the more I think about it, without Ronnie Stanley, without Tyler Linderbaum, Marcus Williams, Marlon Humphrey. Uh, we're going to check out the film, like I said, from Sunday's win. This first one is going to be a big hit on – uh, Boyd, the Bengals' first possession, it's a second and 14. And Stone is really, really heavy, keeping eyes on the quarterback. And you'll see that on the interception. He comes downhill, and he lays the wood. Uh, this is not the first time you'll see him, you've seen him lay hits like this. Earlier in the video, I showed you one. Here's another one. This is gutsy by the Ravens' defense. It's empty. I personally have not been a big fan of our blitzes versus empty. Look at what we're doing. We're bringing Patrick Queen off the edge, creating a two-on-two two with Chase, and I think that's Higgins up there, versus Brandon Stevens and Geno Stone. Watch the redirect from our guys as well. Stone is so committed to his angles. He trusts his teammates. He knows that there's going to be hustle from the inside-out position and guys are going to get there. He's not the only player to get credit for this tackle, but he lays a shot on Jamar Chase, and then so does Patrick Queen. This is a beautiful football play. That's as beautiful as the interception, if you ask me, because of how committed he is. And the position that he's put in is two on two. That's Higgins and Jamar Chase versus Brandon Stevens and Geno Stone. Would you expect us to win that matchup? No, I wouldn't either. I think it's a beautiful football play, and that's why I'm highlighting it, along with um, his interception. All right, fourth possession. This is going to be Mixon uh, for three yards. 
and Stone's playing boundary side safety, so he's being stressed by the boundary side X. The Ravens are doing this a lot this year. I noted it in preseason. They did call him out of bounds there, by the way. To the boundary when they've got one receiver. I wonder what's going on here. It's see don't know. I'm not smart enough to figure it out. I wonder if all three of these guys are reading the back, and if the back releases to the flats on certain calls, the boundary side safety goes ahead and takes him and leaving this guy man-to-man. -man. What it does is it absolves these guys of any pass coverage responsibility, allowing them to blitz, allowing them to cover, you know, to the trip side. You can see what, I mean, Burrow's letting go of the football now. Stone is 12 yards away, maybe 13, I guess. Doesn't make a huge hit on Mixon, who I thought was pretty effective when he did get the football in his hands. It was a critical play on this fourth possession because it set up a third and two, which I'll show you here in a moment. He's ruled out of bounds there, two-yard gain on third and four. Sets up a third and two. Stone's down here. This tight end, Irv Smith, out of 13 personnel. They're going to motion him, return motion, and then motion him again. And it's a pick concept, so Stone's got to run underneath of this pick by the top side receiver. He's got to go underneath of this to try to chase down Smith. You can see Burroughs um, already let go of the football. Stone gets there for the tackle. They convert the first down on this fourth possession. Like I said, the Bengals, the Bengals offense started rolling in the third quarter. They got things going. But overall, for having Brandon Stevens out there and Geno Stone in place of Marlon Humphrey and Marcus Williams, here's what you got. Seven possessions by the Bengals. Yeah, they did score three touchdowns, but one of them was on a punt return. So two touchdowns, three punts, one field goal, and one interception, which I'm getting ready to show you here in a minute from this fourth possession. Burrow, as I said yesterday in the reaction video, was 27 of 41, 222. He did have two touchdowns and one interception. He got things rolling there in the third quarter. That's what makes this play so important, if you ask me. It's a second and eight on the fourth possession. I think the Ravens have called some type of split field coverage over here that puts man everywhere he goes on the number one receiver. And then these three are playing three over two over top of the number two and number three receiver. Because you're going to get like a Z under here. And I think they leave that man. Thank goodness, by the way, that this ball was not uh, thrown to Jamar Chase with Burrow looking the other way. But were it to be thrown to Jamar Chase quickly, Geno Stone's reading him. He's going to break on that. This is an example, if you ask me, of looking, staring straight at the quarterback, paying off. Look at his helmet, track his helmet, you know, during the play. He's looking right at Burrow. We've got Brandon Stevens down here one-on-one -on -one with Jamar Chase, and he does get lost in terms of loses right around the five or the three-yard line. Burrow is reading that side. He's waiting for Higgins to clear over the top of Roquan Smith. We've, we've basically bracketed the number two or number three receiver, and we're playing man on number one to the backside. You basically have man on chase, but I wonder if the Ravens are doing stuff where they're looking. I mean, initially Burrow looked here for a moment and held stone, and then he looks back to the trip side. He thinks that he does not have a one-on-one -on -one down here to the bottom side. If he had time to come back here, look at what is available to Jamar Chase. I mean, you've got a perfect opportunity to throw him the football if he was able to get that far in the read, if the pass rush was not able to get there. As it stands, an amazing football play by Geno Stone. <clears throat> Using Burrow's eyes against him. We just won a football game against the Bengals offense on the road without two starting linemen where Geno Stone and Brandon Stevens played on the same side and held Jamar Chase to three catches. I'm pretty sure that in the in coming weeks, There'll be more of an attempt to get him the football. But even when they did get him in the football, get him the football on screens, I thought we were physical, like the play that I showed you. In the quote, modern version of the NFL, 11 personnel throwing the ball 40, 45 times a game, you still have opportunities to be physical. The Ravens, DBs, and linebackers are willing and, and capable of doing that. And then a backup safety for us <clears throat> makes the play of the game in terms of getting us a two score lead. If he's not in position to do this, T. Higgins could very, you know, could very well get a touchdown catch. I don't know about you, but I've been a Ravens fan for a long time. We had Lamar on the field, so you know what I'm getting ready to say doesn't make sense. But this is as memorable a win, and there's been a ton of them, clearly. 
This is as memorable a win early in the season when there's so many guys that are down. There's so many guys that were not available. I chose to do my first film study of the week on Geno Stone because I think it illustrates what can be done with players who've prepared in the same system for a couple of years. This is his second year in the, the split field safety system that, that McDonald is running. Point number one. Point number two, I think what McDonald and the defense are doing against Burrow, now I even think one of the announcers talked about it, they are forcing him to make multiple decisions pre-snap and post-snap. And in some cases, that can force him to make mistakes. In this case, it did. He didn't account for the backside safety. I think Burrow probably thought looking to that side at first would hold that backside safety. He, being Stone, he can't look over there too long because he, then he'll lose the ability to read to the front side, to the trip side, and that's the whole point. The Ravens have forced him to make decisions how long to look to one side to try to hold or keep a safety from occupying to that trip side. If he had it to do over again, he would clearly try to get the ball to Jamar Chase, but if he looks there at first and stays over there, then Geno Stone is going to stay locked on that side and he's going to help out Brandon Stevens then he'd have to come back to the trip side read. So what we're doing defensively is putting a lot of pressure on Burrow. It may not be the pressure the way that we think about pressure in quarterbacks with the pass rush, but it is pressure. It's mental pressure being exerted on him by the amount of decisions he has to make on every play as, as each second passes. And he's got to always keep in mind the potential for the pass rush to get there. I think this is a Geno Stone play but I think it's credited to our, our defensive staff and the way they do things in a cumulative sense to Joe Burrow to force him to make decisions. And in this case, he clearly made a bad one. I don't know about you, but I can't wait to see these two teams play again. I feel like I could watch the Ravens and Bengals play each other every week. My second film study a video that will come out in a little while will be about Patrick McCarry and Sam Mustafer, who, who really just threw a gem going against a, a pretty tough Bengals front. Appreciate you guys' time. If you think other Ravens fans would enjoy this film study video, Please consider grabbing a link to it and sharing it out on social media to help this content get more reach.